Today we're going to be going over OBS Studio scene embedding and optimizing OBS so that it uses as little CPU as possible. And I'm going to talk about how to think about OBS so that you can be more creative with your streaming. First, before we make any changes to your OBS setup, please duplicate your profile and your scene collection so that you can go back. If you don't like anything that you've done or if you made a mistake, this will allow you to revert. Also, you can go in and you can export your profile and scene collection as a backup and you can restore that if you have any issues. The other thing is to make sure that your OBS is up to date. I'm on version 27.0.1 as of today that is the latest version. Please go to the OBS website and make sure you are on the latest version. If you're not, download the latest version off the website. Sometimes OBS will not update itself properly. If you're using a plugin like OBS.Live, sometimes it won't update OBS properly. So just make sure you're on the latest version of OBS according to the OBS Studio website. So now that you're on your duplicate scene collection and profile, or you can create a brand new one if you want to follow along with me here in OBS, let me explain how I think about OBS so that you can be more creative with your content live or recorded. I think about OBS in three layers. You have a foreground, you have a camera ground, and you have a background. Now, there are some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, the majority of streams, you're going to want to think about OBS in these three layers alone. And everything is in relationship to the camera. You have the camera, and then you have the things in front of the camera, and you have things behind the camera. Now, there are sub-layers, possibly, where you have maybe a camera border like this, and that's technically in the camera scene and not in the foreground. Uh, I consider those things to be maybe a part of the camera itself. So, you still have three layers that you want to work with. The foreground typically consists of things like alerts. That's why I have this alerts set up here in the foreground. The camera ground is typically set up uh, with your camera and in here you can put all of your things that you would have going with your camera overlays and things like that and then your background would be things like your game capture, your capture cards, all that kind of stuff. Um, anything that's a background behind your camera, even alerts. You could have special effect alerts that are happening in the background while your main foreground alerts are happening at the same time. This is the key to helping you find places to be more creative with your stream. What can I do with my camera? What can I do with my foreground? What can I do with my background? What triggers things to happen in the foreground? What things are happening in the background? Alerts, a lot of times, are only seen in the foreground, but it doesn't have to be that way. They could affect your camera. They could affect the background. They could be, all three layers could be happening at the same time. This is one of the reasons I suggest using stream elements because you can create multiple scene alerts and think about when someone follows, maybe something happens in the foreground, maybe my camera border changes, maybe my background has fireworks or something crazy going on. Um, this is how you want to kind of approach things. Now let's talk about building OBS out as far as optimization goes. So now let's build our camera layer properly. So your camera is one of the things that gets used over and over again in OBS. Maybe you have it on your starting soon screen. Maybe you've got a camera on your BRB screen. Anytime you've got a camera hooked up to OBS, what you want to do is make sure that it is only hooked up once. A lot of people will just copy and paste their camera over and over again in different scenes where they think it's needed. And what you're doing is you're reconnecting the device over and over and over again. You do not want to do that. I've had people, when they switch scenes, they have to activate and deactivate their camera in order for it to show up. And the reason that you have to do that is because you've got video capture device, which is how you would hook up a camera in OBS is through the video capture device option. But if you hook up multiple video capture devices to one camera, your camera is not going to always be connected to each of those video camera sources. And you can create problems in OBS even copying and pasting the camera over and over and over again can be problematic and use extra CPU cycles that you don't want to be using. You know, maybe you're playing a game that runs fine. OBS is having no, no problem. And then next month, a game comes out that you want to play on stream and that game is killing your system and OBS is chugging. And if you just optimize OBS a little bit, it might have an easier time. So, 
First thing you want to do is make three new scenes in OBS. Foreground, camera ground, and background. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a camera scene. And we're going to add a source. You would use video capture device and put your camera in here. I'm just going to use an image right now since my camera is in use in the recording. So we're going to call this camera. And we're going to choose this little human face thing and hit OK. And then uh, what you'd want to do is you could go to my other camera settings video. I'll link it in the description below. You want to set up your camera properly with the proper resolution. Once you've got the proper settings for your camera, you can right click on it, go to transform and say fit to screen. Or as you can see, you can use control F. Now you do not want to stretch your camera. I've seen a lot of you guys just grab your camera and try to stretch it out. And uh, you end up like looking like this. You're changing the aspect ratio of the camera and now you're all stretched out. Don't, don't do that. Hit control R, then hit control F. Fit your camera to the scene. So now that we've got a camera scene, this camera scene has the one camera source hooked up to this scene. And this is where our scene embedding starts. Anywhere you want to use your camera now, you just embed this camera scene, not the camera itself. The camera is unaltered, it doesn't have a border, it doesn't have anything crazy going on. It's just, this is just a scene to allow you to attach the camera to OBS, and that's it. So in our camera ground scene, we're gonna go into sources and we're gonna add a new source called a scene. And this is where the scene embedding gets used. And you're gonna choose your camera scene. Now you've got your camera scene in the camera ground. This is where you would put anything that you'd want. If you want alerts that affect this layer, if you want a, a, a border, an overlay, anything at all. Um, maybe you want to flip, flip it. We, we can do that here or we can do that somewhere else. This is just your camera ground and this is going to help you build your live scene. So let's make a new scene called Live Gaming. So this is going to be the scene we're going to use to kind of put everything together. So we're going to say add scene. We're going to choose foreground. So we've got our foreground. We're going to choose add scene. We've got our camera ground. And we're going to choose add scene again. And we're going to put the background. So now, if I put this all the way on the top, our live gaming scene contains the foreground, which will always be on top in the background, which will always be on the bottom, and our camera ground, which will always be in between. You do not want to add more scenes to the live gaming scene than this. Now, you can do it if you need a temporary situation. You want to add a window capture, a game capture, display capture, um, just real quick to show an example. But realistically, you do not want this scene to be more than these three layers because that's where things start to get messy. If you need to fix your camera, something's wrong with your camera, you can go into studio mode, go to your camera scene, and adjust things. If you need to fix something with your overlay with your camera, that's where you would go into camera ground. And in here, you could add borders and overlays to your camera. So in your live gaming scene, what you want to do is build out backwards all the things that you want in your gaming scene. So in, let's say in our foreground, let me get out of studio mode, let's go into foreground, you have alerts. So you'd add your browser source and your alerts. And in our live gaming scene, we've got our camera here, which is just obviously too big. So we're going to shrink it down. And the camera, as you can see, the borders of the camera are at where the scene ends and not where the camera edge is. That's important to keep in mind. So if you want to crop this in, you can, but if you need to do any real cropping to your actual camera so that it's cropped in every scene, you should do that in the camera scene. You can crop in here and it will crop everywhere else. If I, if I move this over to the left side of the screen and we go to our live gaming, you can now see that it's moved here as well. I'm going to reset and fit. Now I can place this however I want, and we can lock it. So I would say I want the camera to be quite big, 
and lock it. Now it's not going anywhere. If I wanted a nice little chatting scene, say chat chatting scene, and we would then just go in, we'd say add scene, and we'd add the camera ground scene, and there you go. Now we've got this chatting scene, this big camera, you can move it over here. Same thing applies. You can have chat, you can do all your overlays, everything that you need to do in your chatting scene, go to your live gaming scene. And then in your live gaming scene, we'd want to also then add the foreground because that's where your alerts are. So if I run an alert now, let's test an alert. There we go. So as you can see, we've got alerts going in front of the camera. If I go to the live gaming scene, the alerts are also there. So let's go to our background scene. We don't have anything in there yet. Uh, I'm going to add a color source. Um, and we'll just call this gaming color source. Okay. And we're going to change the color to purple. Beautiful. So now if I go to my live gaming scene, you can see if we've got a purple background behind our camera. The alerts are in the foreground. Everything's good. Your background scene is where you'd want to place your game captures. Uh, your, you, could put, you could put graphics back here so that when your game capture or your capture card is off, you've just got your logos and you've got fancy stuff going on behind everything. In case all that stuff doesn't get connected right, you need to troubleshoot things. At least you've got your branding, your logo, whatever, behind um, everything. So it's not just a plain scene. You can get creative in this way. You can also put alerts in this background scene that you'd want to affect uh, things behind your camera. Maybe just a flourish, uh, fireworks, or flowers, or some kind of leaves or something, just to add some flair to your alerts. If somebody follows, maybe something swipes across the game scene, and you still have the text in the front and the foreground going saying thanks for the follow. This is the best way to optimize OBS. If you're using multiple cameras, you want to make a single scene for each camera. Say camera, camera scene, camera scene, camera two scene, camera one scene, camera three scene. Only attach your cameras once. If you'd like, you can also do this with audio. Now, if you, if you don't want to go in and hook up your audio, let's say as an audio device, as a global audio device, you can make an audio scene and put your microphones, all of your audio, everything that's important audio-wise can go in that audio scene. And then you embed that audio scene in, say, the camera ground. And here you'd have another scene called audio. Anywhere you put your camera, you'd also have your audio sources. You can also add your audio sources to the background. Let's say if you have a separate audio capture for your games and for some reason. You could put that in your background scene. The best thing you can do for OBS and for your computer is to utilize OBS with this kind of thinking. Separate your stuff into scenes and only use sources once if you can help it. Your alerts don't need to be copied and pasted into every scene. Browser source, browser source, browser source. They should just be in the foreground. If you want, you can even make a scene called alerts and put all of your alerts in that scene and then put that scene in the foreground and then put the foreground scene where you want your alerts. This is how you want to think about OBS. You can name these scenes however you want. You can literally just call foreground alerts if that's all you ever put in there. Sometimes people put overlays and other things and pop-ups and channel point redemptions in the foreground. And so maybe you want a scene that utilizes more than just alerts. But I suggest that you build OBS this way. The other reason is... If you want to add an alert, a new alert, or a new effect to your stream, all you have to do is put it in the foreground. Now, anywhere the foreground is in OBS, that new alert and that new browser source will work in all of your scenes that have the foreground in it. You do not have to go in and add the browser source over and over and over again in every scene, your chatting scene, your live scene. You just put it in once. And another thing is if something is broken, like an alert is broken, a browser source is not connecting right, and you need to refresh the cache on it or reconnect the URL for some reason, you just do it in the one scene. This makes troubleshooting and fixing issues in OBS way easier. 
So I highly recommend that everybody build OBS this way. If you guys have any questions or have any comments or you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys in the next video.